So I just got done giving our local university, Cal State University Northridge, a tour of the shop, and it's their race team, their FSAE. So in this video and this series of videos, we're gonna break up that tour and show you different nuggets of little wisdom, opportunities, uh, lean things, and shop tips that hopefully are a benefit to you guys. Okay, so uh, we have, you can clearly see like this is our mill side, all haws, our lathe side, we'll tour that next. That's all our Doosan machines. Uh, but for the most part, everything has a flow. Like uh, the lean term that you might hear is gemba. Have you heard that term? It's, it's a fancy word for shop floor. It's where the profit is made, okay? So here we have an approach where everything should follow a designated path from the back door raw materials. It loops through the shop down one of the aisles and then it goes into assembly. And at the end, you'll see that we put our packages on conveyor belts so we don't have to pick them up at the end of the day. We don't have to cart them. It just goes out. So it should be this thing. There's no zigzag, you know, craziness, spaghetti thing. It has a very distinct flow. That's what we want to do. Um, there's eight ways. I don't know. Have you talked to them about the eight ways? Um, no, I'll let okay. you decide. That. Yeah, so everywhere you'll see these little things, the eight ways uh, posters. They're literally everywhere. They're in the bathroom, even in the bathroom, st strategically across from the toilet. So you can't do human stuff without seeing the eight ways while you expel your waste. That's crude. I'm sorry I said that. But anyways. <laughs> Um, so like, that's one of the things we're always trying to eliminate waste. Waste is something that doesn't add value to the product. So in the machining world, uh, uh, shops will bill their customers for material, for setup, for machining, and then maybe some engineering. We focus in on that setup. Like, why is it fair for a machine shop to have a super inefficient process of setting up their machines? Like, sometimes two, four, eight hours, bill it to the customer. If you had two shops that one said, oh no, we have very low setup time. It's so low, we don't even bill you for it because we have standardized processes. There's two, four, six, eight, ten 10 hours that we don't bill the customer. That's how two shops, one practices lean, one doesn't. The shop that practices lean gets the job every time because they're not billing their customer for things that aren't fair. Like, and I, I do think it is a justice thing. Why should the customer pay for our inefficiencies? It doesn't make sense. So one of the things that we've done here with all our mills is we have standardized tooling. Like, uh, are, you've all been in the machine shop, right? Have they gone? Yeah, yeah they all okay, been great. Um, so you guys have a VF4? VF4, yeah. Yeah, okay, so probably 30 tools. Yeah, 39 tool holder. Okay, yeah. all right. So what we do is we have uh, our components that go in specific machines where we never change out the tools. If they wear, we do, but we don't say, oh, we need like a 3 8 drill for this, swap it out. Oh, we need like a, some weird metric end mill, let's put that in. No, it's if we pulled up our spreadsheet, you would see on the EC400, which has 100 tools, tools one through 100 are all standardized. So we, when we program, we know that's what we need. So again, standardization is huge in lean manufacturing. It stops you from doing the things you shouldn't be doing. So the other thing you'll see as we walk, you'll see all of our products being used in the machines. It'd be a bit hypocritical to be a work holding manufacturer to not use our own products. Um, that's a good thing. You also see like third party products that we just don't make. So if we don't make the products, we're gonna go buy it from the best, the best manufacturer we can. And of course we've got the YouTube channel and if they're a great work holding company, we'll highlight that in one of their videos. Like we have a very, it, we're not competitive, we're collaborative. Because when two companies compete, uh, it's typically a race to the bottom, lowering prices. And then they, what if the other company has a better technology but we wanna sell it? The customer loses in the end. The manufacturers lose because they're reducing their profits. The customer loses because they're get, not getting the best product they lose. So I will all the time go to a company and say, hey, they are determined to use a vice. I want to use an orange vice. I want to use a Kurt vice, but they want to pair it on our pallet system. Now we're collaborating with a competitor. The customer wins. We're not racing to the bottom. So, um, and collaboration is what you guys should be doing in the real world. Like on your finals, you can't look over and collaborate with someone sitting next to you. It's called cheating. It's crazy in the real world. 
you would be crazy to not collaborate or cheat with someone. So there's this dichotomy where school looks very different from the real world, okay? You do want to ask people for help. You do want to collaborate. So we want to uh, be a company that propagates that, like where we are collaborating not just within these four walls, but within other work holding companies, so.